Hi everyone, I'm Chris Holbert, and this is the third video in the Swift Education series. Swift Education is a curriculum on how to make iOS apps, created by Yong Bakos. He's a uh, university professor, and uh, I'm going to help walk you through this. Okay, today we're doing lesson three on the uh, word collage series, and today we're going to learn about uh, Apple development tools such as Xcode iOS Simulator, Swift, and Frameworks, and show you how to connect interface views to controller actions. So let's get started. To find this, go to swifteducation.github.io. The homepage looks like so. Follow the link through to teaching app development with Swift. Uh, follow the next link through to word collage. Scroll down, and here's the third lesson. You'll want to download the lesson plan. I've already got that open in another tab. And you'll want to download the Xcode project, which I have also downloaded already onto my desktop. Great, so let's get stuck in. Okay, so I've downloaded the, the lesson. Let's open it up. Here we go. Let's open up the storyboard. Great. As we've, uh, this is pretty similar to what we've seen in the previous two lessons. So let's fire it up in the simulator. And here we go. Great. Okay, here we are back at the storyboard. Let's add a button. So let's go down here and find a button. Let's drag it on. Now let's have a look at some of the inspectors. This is the identity inspector. This shows you which class this button is. Now, normally you leave the class as is, but if you subclass it, as you might do if, as you get a bit more advanced, you'd have your custom class in here. And your module, if for instance, you are pulling in custom classes from other Swift modules, which again is a pretty advanced thing to do. And there's a bunch of other things here in here. Let's look at the Attributes Inspector next. You can click the icon here, or you can do Alt-Command-4. Alt-Command-3 will open the Identity one, and 5 will open the Sizing one. Back to Attributes. So the button is the System button. You'll usually want that. That's the iOS 7 Plus default. Let's change its text to Change Background. And now let's go through the size inspector. Here we can see the size of the frame. And if there were any constraints set on this view or button, you'd see them listed here, but we haven't set any constraints up yet. But for instance, if we were so inclined, you could manually override the, the positioning here, the X, Y, width, and so on. Let's make the width. There we go. You can do that. Generally, you'll probably want to stick to changing constraints. Now, if we run this, you'll see that the button isn't really positioned correctly. This is because we haven't set any constraints on it. So here it is hanging a bit to the right in portrait mode. And in landscape mode, it's kind of hanging a little bit to the left of center. So let's uh, sort that out. Now here's a way you can also set constraints rather than the buttons down here. You can right click drag or if you don't have a uh, two button mouse, control drag from the button to its super view and you get a bunch of options. If you hold down alt, you get even more options. So I'm holding alt, I let go of alt, holding, let go, you see what I mean. So let's make it have a bottom space to the bottom layout guide. Now that has created, as you can see, a constraint that ties it all the way to the bottom. It's also got this constraint to the left, or this dotted area to the left. This is saying where I really want to be because that's where my constraints say I should be. And that's all the way to the left because we haven't given it a horizontal constraint yet. So let's give it a horizontal centering. 
click on the align control. We will horizontally center it at the constraint. And now you can see it's a bit orange. Let's click here. It says misplaced views. So we click there. This is the view that's misplaced. Click on the resolve auto layout issues button. Now, nothing comes up. Is it because we have to click on the button over here first? There we go. Now it's all centered. You've got no auto layout issues. And you're golden. So let's run that. It's all centered nicely. However, when you run it in landscape mode, the constraint pushes it so far up. See how the constraint pushes it about yay high? It's pushed it so far up that you can't actually see it. So let's fix the vertical constraint. So we can go to the size over here, the size inspector rather. And here is the constraint we're interested in. Now the bottom space to the bottom layout guide is 380. Let's make that a bit more reasonable. Let's make it 40. Now we are always going to be 40 from the bottom. Let's see how that looks. Now you can see it's at the bottom, centered, and same when you rotate. Beautiful. Now notice when you click the button, it kind of dims a bit to indicate that it's you've tapped it, but nothing actually happens. That's because we haven't hooked it up. So this is a good time to run you through how apps work together. We've just been playing around with the user interface for now, but what we need to do is actually make this button do something. And to do that, we need to start coding. Now, iOS apps up until about a year ago were written in a language called Objective-C, which was quite a simple object-oriented programming language from, I believe, the 80s. But as of about a year ago, Apple released Swift to the world, which is a much more modern language. It's very friendly and it's actually grown on me quite a lot over the last six months. I'm a huge fan of it. And uh, that's what we're here to learn today. So let's have a brief look at that. So this is um, what is known as the app delegate. The app delegate, think of it as a person who coordinates the app. Think of it as like the fat controller of your app. If you used to watch a certain show that had trains in it. A view controller is basically a screen and the code behind a view controller is the code that controls that screen. Other pieces of the puzzle when you're making apps are Coco Touch. Now Coco Touch is also known as UIKit and it is all the parts that Apple have brought to the table that let you make apps more easily. For instance, a button is part of the Coco Touch world. Um, a view controller is Coco Touch. These are all the technologies that make an iOS app separate from, say, a Mac app. So a Mac app uses Coco, and an iOS app uses Coco Touch. They would both use Swift, so a lot of their code would be similar. For instance, they would all have functions, they would all have classes, but things such as a view controller, that's part of Coco Touch. Other things you've got. There are instruments. Now, instruments is a great way of making sure your app works well. Now, a lot of developers don't actually use it, so you'll probably be familiar with the concept of downloading an app from the App Store and it crashes. If they had used instruments, they'd probably be in a much better position regarding that. And instruments basically lets you run your app with a bunch of dials connected, kind of like a heart rate monitor that uh, monitors what your app is doing and lets you just make sure you've done all your coding correctly. So for instance, the most common thing that people will do with it is use it to make sure that it's not leaking memory. Now, memory, if you leak memory, your app is going to eventually crash. So that's a very common thing. And you can also use it to make sure that your app is efficient by using the time profile. 
and there's a whole bunch of other things you can do. Here's the iOS simulator. We've seen this before. This lets you run apps locally on your on your Mac a lot more quickly than having to copy it to a device to test things on. However, of course, you're going to want to test on a device sooner or later. But in the day-to-day -day, um, work of creating your app, the simulator is going to save you a heck of a lot of time. So you'll spend a lot of time working with the simulator as well as Xcode. Now Xcode ships with a compiler called Clang. Clang is built on top of LLVM, and both of these are parts of the whole compilation tool chain created, well, created by a team headed up by a guy called Chris Latner. Now he's a bit of a genius that Apple has hired to uh, make sure all their developer tools are top notch. And um, among other things, he invented Swift. So he's a pretty clever guy. Finally, let's talk about MVC. Also known as Model View Controller, this is a rough guide to how you should structure your app. Your app should consist of three things. Uh, firstly, M for model. Model is anything such as data, anything that isn't, isn't user interface. So things such as your database, talking to a uh, remote server, talking to an API or something like that. These all go in your model layer of your app. V stands for view. Now your view is anything that's visible. Your views are allowed to talk to controllers and keep your views as simple and try to make sure that they don't know anything about your model. And your controller, this is used to bridge between your models and your views. So think of your views as what the user can see and your model as anything important that the user can't see. And think of your controller as anything that grabs data from your model and puts it on screen into your views. So here's a view controller, and you'll have other kinds of controls as well, but your view controller is going to be the main one for that. So that's MVC in a very, um, very summarized form. Okay, now we're going to hook up the button to some code. So what we need to do firstly is open up the storyboard, which I've already done, and we'll need to open up the assistant editor. You can click this button here to open the assistant editor. Basically, it lets you open two files side by side. Now we'll get rid of the, the navigator. So we've got a bit more horizontal real estate. Now, what we can do, this is the view controller that it controls the code that is behind this, this user interface. So we'll drag, control drag or right click drag from the button into the controller. Let go here and create an action. An action is a bit of code that runs whenever you tap it. An outlet allows you to have an object that links through to the visible button. But action is what we're interested in here. Let's call the action change background color. Notice we're using a thing called camel case. Now, it's a bit contrived, but uh, you know how camels have humps? Well, here's the low lower part of the camel, here's the hump of the camel, here's the camel going low again. Oh, it's a dromedary camel, it's got another hump, and it's gone low again. That's what camel case is. Now there's two types of camel case, lower camel, this is lower, or upper camel. Um, we use lower camel case for function names in Swift. And let's make that connection. So here we go, we've got a button, a function that is connected to our button, and it'll get called whenever you tap that button. You may notice in this function, it's got an at IB action. This is used so that Interface Builder knows that this is a special kind of function that can be connected through to the user interface. It's essential if you got rid of it, things wouldn't connect up properly, so make sure you leave it in there. Now we're gonna make this button actually do something. So what we want to do is change view. View, according to the view controller, is the root view. So it's the equivalent of this view here. We can set its background color. Let's set it to UI color. Let's set it to purple. Great, let's run this and see what happens. 
There you go, it's all gone purple. Great. Now, let's experiment with the API reference. If you do Command Shift Zero, it'll take you to the documentation. And so let's search for the UI color. And notice there's a bunch of bunch of help here on how you can use UI color. And notice here are some of the predefined pre colors that you can use. Black, dark gray, light gray, white, gray, so on and so forth. There's purple, always a favorite. There's some system colors, such as light and dark text, and so on and so forth. And you can make custom colors using init with red, green, blue, and so on and so forth. But the main point of this is, this is how you can look up documentation in Xcode. You either use Command Shift Zero, or you go Help Documentation and API Reference. It's the first thing in Help because it's the most important help. Now you'll probably forget Command Shift Zero for a while, so just go through the Help menu. Great! Thanks for watching.